This is a Fluke 43B power quality analyzer which was sent in for repair by a viewer and it's having an issue with the display that I think will be uh, quite obvious to where's that? That's rough dark. But uh, the display is full of uh, horizontal lines. If you go around this issue, there are many proposed solutions. Most of them involve buying a very expensive replacement LCD panel and uh, if a viewer wish, uh, wants me to see if there's any way around that or perhaps just uh, a possibility of getting a cheap Chinese knockoff panel to put there instead. So I figured we'd take this thing apart and uh, see if there is indeed any possibility. I think this might just be a failed zebra strip or something because the most prominent result for this issue is uh, just uh, a couple of YouTube videos where they just uh, take it apart and pretty much replace the screen without uh, doing a lot to actually troubleshoot the issue. So let's delve a bit deeper. So that's the actual meter part to taken out, we're left with the display board. Uh, something I noted about this particular unit is uh, the uh, ribbon cable going to the display was uh, not attached properly, but I'd, I find it to be highly unlikely that uh, that would be the actual issue with this device since uh, we're seeing individual lines going out and not uh, chunks of a display. So I think we've got to rip the actual display board out in order to bench test this, so let's just keep tearing at it. And that would be our display. So, looking at this, uh, I would say that it's very likely that uh, what's causing this issue would be a bond failure between this wire and the PCB. And I can see that there's actually a bend on this board, which uh, might have occurred over time. So, I think we'd better uh, boot the meter up and see if we can affect the issue by bending and pressing and squeezing on this area. All right, I've now connected it up uh, on the bench, out of the case, so let's see if we can turn it on and get an activity out of it. And we'll still have a lines on the screen, so can we affect them? Yes, we can. So now we need to decide whether or I'll figure out whether this is a failure of a bonding uh, to the actual glass or if it's a failure of a bonding to the PC PCB. This does not look like a, an easy fix wherever the bonding failure might be. And I'm squeezing quite tightly on those and I'm not noticing any difference. So at this stage I'm Sadly, quite confident that this display board is a lost cause and uh, might not be repairable by any normal means. Uh, however, uh, since we're dealing with a repair which should be kept as cheap as possible, uh, and we're dealing with uh, what would be a dead board anyway, I'm going to try a few things on this. Uh, firstly, I figured we'd try just hot airing small parts of the uh, flat, uh, flat flex area to see if we can somehow remelt the adhesive and make it work again. So let's go, I don't think there's going to be an issue with having the LCD on at the time. So I have about 300 degrees coming out of it. Let's see if it does anything. And it's absolutely melting the cable. We need to turn the unit off since we need to go from the underside. Alright, so I just uh, quite thoroughly heated this corner of the board from the underside here since there's no copper vs or not a lot of them anyway going around going through in that area uh, you, it took, took quite a long heating at relatively low temperature to uh, hopefully get uh, heat penetration so it's cooled down a bit so let's turn it on and see if it's made any difference I'm sadly skeptical Oh, would you look at that? Uh, the warm display is not displaying properly, but uh, we've gotten our pixels back. So I'm now gonna try and be a bit uh, easier on the heat since uh, we seem to have caused some damage to the LCD panel. We are seeing a severe lack of contrast in the heated area, but it might return as the panel cools down. 
uh, but we, we have certainly caused a significant improvement in the visibility of the display. So let's just uh, do the rest and hope for the best. Alright, I took a much faster approach this time, uh, to doing the entire length of the uh, flat flex in uh, about two minutes uh, at uh, 340 degrees Celsius uh, medium airflow. I'm on cheaply hot air station, so let's see if that uh, was enough or if we need to go a bit riskier and take a longer time to heat through the board. It seems as if uh, the damage to the LCD has occurred again, uh, and but uh, we have indeed fixed a few more lines. The ones at the top are now gone, as well as the ones at the bottom. So you needed to take a fair amount of time doing this. I'm going to redo the center part, uh, but sadly it seems the damage to the LCD. Uh, is an unavoidable do, do, using this technique, although this time I'm going to have a computer fan blowing air across the actual LCD in order to help it dissipate some heat. Alright, so let's try it again. Hope for the wolf out uh, any major damage to the LCD. I took uh, a couple of minutes to ref heat the board this time. Ah, we, we have gotten a couple of lines back, lost another couple. The middle ones seem to be certainly the most uh, persistent ones. Uh, granted, the LCD is performing better now that it's uh, cooled off, so perhaps we weren't permanently damaging it, we were just uh, heating it up and causing it to perform uh, poorly. But the lines down there seem to be quite reliably gone, even if I poke around they are showing no signs of reappearing. So I'm going to mark up where exactly these lines are and uh, uh, try heating this thing one final time. Alright, I have now heated it uh, one more time uh, in the area of the lines and I also use my tweezers to apply a very slight pressure to the wire as I was doing that, uh, since the board seems to be ever so slightly bent, uh, I think a large part of what's creating this issue is that uh, the board is bending over time and the wire is simply, due to the bend in that direction, uh, simply not adhering to that uh, bend over time, causing the glue, glue solder, whatever kind of joints that are to fail. So, Fingers crossed. Ah, those lines are not going away. Oh, but would you look at that? I do believe we have defeated all of the lines. So what he ended up doing was uh, shoving a couple of Q-tips uh, in between the display and the PCB and adjusting them to uh, put a pressure on the uh, solder pads where they uh, uh, when we where we were seeing lines, and I just kept doing that uh, in every place a line popped up. I had to go back and forth a couple of times since the lines would come and go. Uh, and as I paired it up this time, there was one line kind of coming and going. But uh, as I removed everything, it seems to have turned quite fine. And uh, this is going to bite me in the eyes. But uh, let's try agitating this a bit, bending the display. No signs. Let's poke the cable. I'm poking the cable quite harshly for being one of these. And we're only seeing no returning lines. What if we bend the board? That, that is, I am agitating that board fiercely. I'm bending it to the better part of a millimeter. And it's not showing any issues. So I do believe that would be a fix. And since I uh, was using the fan to keep the LCD cool at all times, uh, we aren't even seeing that contrast loss we were seeing before. So there you go. Uh, of course, you cannot know for how long this repair is going to last. And indeed, this is not my meter, so I cannot tell you uh, in editing either. But uh, for a quick fix, uh, this has just taken me the better part of an hour, uh, I would say that it's a very, very valid repair method. So thank you for watching.
Cheerio.